What's up everybody? Bachana Knight back with a video on the five must-have tools in this sport, Armored Combat Booger. And I'm putting this list in order from the very first tool you'll encounter that you'll need as your career goes on in this combat sport. So, the very first thing everyone is going to need is a leather punch. If you've never seen one of these before, you can see that this wheel spins around. These little holes here are basically going to put a hole in a piece of leather. You got yourself a piece of leather. You don't like where these holes are. You can take this leather punch and you can put a hole basically anywhere you want. See that? So your armor doesn't fit. You need to tighten things up. You need to loosen them. The little thing that goes through the hole doesn't line up anymore. That's, that's what you can do. Perfect example, when I got my sabatons, these leather strips were actually blank. There were no holes in them. And I actually cut them to fit exactly where I needed them. I guarantee you one of the first things you'll ever have a use for is this leather punch. Or you'll be at an event and someone will say, hey, does anyone have a leather punch? First tool on the must-have list. The second most important tools you're going to need are for sewing. This is going to be, I almost guarantee, the second problem you run into in this sport. It doesn't even need to be a kit, but I suggest you get some kind of assortment of needles as far as length, the skinniness, how thin they are. I do recommend a thimble because sometimes it is hard to push these needles through this thick stuff that we wear. I even have a set of hooked needles so that sometimes, especially like inside a helmet, I can push it in and it'll sort of curve and come out so I can actually make loops like inside the fabric. And I'll give you a tip, right? A lot of times you're thinking, all right, thread. Like I have some basic black thread here. But you know what I use a lot of where things need to be re really durable is fishing line. This is like 50 pound um, enhanced strength, whatever. But it's moss green color. It has no difference as far as nobody ever is ever going to look at the thread you use. But I can tell you this is more durable than regular thread. So I often use fishing line. As you can see here, like my arming point, I sewed this on to this gambeson. As you can see, my sewing skills were definitely needed. Second most important tool right here. This is why I say I'll need an assortment of needles. This is some thick helmet liner in here. As you can see, I'm gonna have to replace some of this here pretty soon. But all this requires sewing. Very important tool. Number two on your list, you need sewing supplies. I'll give you a tip. I don't just start here and go all the way around. I do things in doubles, like right here, or singles. Go hold a hole, hold a hole. That way, if something like this rips or comes apart, the whole thing doesn't come apart. You're only replacing one or two sections at a time, if you understand what I'm talking about. Always be careful with your fingers working with these sharp tools. Because I'm about to show you a bonus, a bonus tool right here, because you can also find this in the sewing section. I don't know what it's called, but it looks like a screwdriver, but it comes to a pretty sharp point right there. I would maybe call it an awl. But I'll show you a great use and why you want to have one of these. Two great uses, actually. One use for this tool is if you ever had to punch a hole in the gambeson, you see how it comes through there? And you know what it does? It's very sharp, so it pushes the fabric out of the way. Whenever you pull this out, you're going to have a little bit of a hole there, but it's not ripped. You're not really cutting the fabric. This very sharp point sort of goes in and it spreads things apart. So if I need to, to add an arming point real quick, like on the go, just as to put something through this gambeson, there you go. It will be a very clean hole and it's not gonna come apart and, and fray as quick as if you're like cutting or using a leather punch or something actually destroying the fabric. This goes like in between the weave. Another great use for this all, if you're ever like picking at these leather knots, like, you know, I, I can't untie this knot. I can't get this leather knot out with my fingertips. So you use this, you can sort of work it in there. See how it went right through that loop already. So you can use this to sort of wiggle it around and pull some slack. I don't want to take this off because it's perfectly tied where I want, but you get the idea. You can stick this sharp part in, just sort of gently push it through and you can undo a leather knot a lot easier and faster than mess around with your fingers. The third most important must have tool plays a big part after you've had your first event. Because when you're banging metal weapons on other metal weapons or armor, you'll get uh, defects in your blade. It can happen with swords, axes, 
You cannot enter a competition with gouges or sharp barbs on a blade. So we have two options. There's a pretty cheap option, hand tool, or there's a more expensive option, a grinder. And all, this also has some other benefits, which we'll get into. You are going to need something to maintain your weapon's edges. This is a basic like tool sharpener that you can sharpen chisels on, things like that. We're not sharpening the blade, but you can see, like I can see on here, there's some parts where this is gonna need filed down. You can also use a hand file. People use hand files. But there's a little sharp spot there. I can go over it with my hand. I can do this in my bedroom. I cannot use this in my bedroom. Well, I could, but I wouldn't want to. Now, of course, you'll, if you're not familiar with power tools and you decide to go this route, you must know how to use this and be safe. This is something that you don't really use inside your home. So if you live in an apartment, in a city, you don't have anywhere to really plug in a grinder and use it, that's probably not an option for you. But you must have this third must have tool to maintain the edge of your blade. You can at least get something like this or a hand file. Now, this takes a little bit longer, obviously. That's why I prefer a grinder. I go out and back, I put this in a vise to keep the blade uh, still and something to hold it and I can go up and down the edges. I can handle this sword uh, relatively fast using a grinder. But this also has other benefits. For example, I got this, this sword. It had a cross guard that came out to here. I measured exactly both ways. And with this grinder, I was able to chop that exactly where I needed it and file the corners down so it's a very nice, clean looking cross guard. So <laughs> you might find you cannot use a grinder at home. You may be scared of power tools, whatever you're comfortable with. But the first problem you're gonna encounter, most likely after an event, most common thing is maintaining the edge of your blade or else the marshals will not pass your weapon for the next time you get a fight. Third must have tool right here. If you made it this far through the video, leave a like, share it with somebody who needs some tips, leave a comment. It only helps me beat the YouTube algorithm and we can spread the this sport throughout the world because people see these videos. So uh, subscribe also if you like content like this because we do a lot of it on this channel. Bonus tool, see this right here? This is like a Marshall gauge, a weapon gauge. See how uh, this saber when I first got it was probably about that long and I had to use that grinder to make the tip, <laughs> to grind it down where I had to point rounded so it will fit and pass in an event. You can check your weapons too. It should not fit, the blade will not fit in that slot. You can also use this for like two handers. These are curves for things like axes. I do not have any affiliation with American Boohurt, but I did buy this from them. It is metal. They also make plastic ones, but metal is by far the way to go. If you can find a martial tool, a weapon gauge, things like that for this sport, pick one up. It will very much come in handy. All right, tool number four on a must-have list, chainmail. Now, I have a chainmail Aventail. You may not. You may not have any need for chainmail. Actually, I can see a hole in this from here. In these spots where you're getting beat, this chain will eventually break. I can see I have to patch a hole. So what do I have is chainmail. Nine millimeter is probably the smallest that you wanna go. Nine millimeter just just fits on this grill and able to hook onto this next one here. These I think are like uh, 12, I don't know. But measure your chain mail, get a little ruler, and you'll be able to find the size of chain mail you need. If you don't have chain mail, maybe you can skip this step, but I highly recommend you get a kit. I got a kit that came with more chain than that. These are little rivets. This is the tool that comes with it to do the rivets. Do not buy jump rings. If you see anything that says chainmail jump ring, avoid it. Jump rings, you basically bend and you, you squeeze them back so it's a circle and it can easily just come apart. You don't want that. You want these ones that you can rivet. You're in this sport, learn how to use your hands and these tools. So basically, I'm going to be getting hit. You know, things are gonna hit this chain, especially in these places like around the shores. As a matter of fact, I can see some of these things that are bent pretty good and I'm missing one. I can, oh, there it is. I can stick, see I can stick my finger through there. So I'm going to need, need to replace that. And it's very easy. Now these are nine millimeters. 
Uh, I believe that the, the chain I have here is is probably actually like a 10. Yeah, but nine is all I can find. For some reason, sometimes it's harder to find anything other than nine millimeter. Nine millimeter will generally work. You're going to be able to put this chain in here, right? You get a little rivet. Here, I'll show you actually what it looks like because it's very small. Can you see that hole in there? This is your chain mail right here, your, oh, your chain mail link. See that little hole there? You're gonna be able to spread this apart. You thread it through exactly like this pattern is on your helmet. And this little tiny rivet, you're gonna put that through that hole here. And you're gonna be able to take your chain mail crimping tool. I dropped the rivet. So if you drop a rivet, oh man, luckily it's not a table. If it's on the carpet, good luck. But you can slide that through here. See how that goes in there. And, and this is, pretend that this is in your chain mill that you're repairing. You sort of just smash that down there, right? The rivet's smushed, solid. You will need these. Probably not right away. That's why this is in order. It's number four in the list. And it's relatively cheap. I You can actually find this stuff on Amazon. Like I was saying, you need to repair your chain mill at times. You need to fasten chain mail to a grill. This will come in handy, I'm telling you. And you can usually get this stuff as a kit. You've made it to the fifth must-have tool for Armored Combat Boo Hurt Sport. So, I'm just gonna throw this in here. I have a long pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, this is something you really don't need, but I like it for things such as when I'm sometimes doing the chain mail, I can hold it in there. Use the other one to crimp it. Sometimes, Things like that, it just helps to have something like a longer handle. Sometimes when I'm working on stuff, if I'm riveting things, I can help hold things if I, you know, I, I use it. Uh, another great use, see this leather here. It is like, uh, sometimes it's really hard when I'm re-threading leather through here, I can I can just grab the tip of it with these, the skinny end of these needle nose pliers. I can, I can pull it through, stuff like that. Something like this can come in handy. All right, so you're ready for the fifth must-have tool, or should I say tools, because now we're talking rivets. So rivets, odds are maybe rivets will uh, blow before the chain mail, if you have chain mail. So this could actually maybe be number four. Something like this is something you really wanna invest in because you wanna be able to manu manufacture your own rivets out of things like I'm gonna show you, nails, things like that. You wanna be able to maintain your armor if you can do this at home, using all these tools from before, you're set. You're not gonna have any issues. Anything greater than what we're covering in this video is gonna be like you need to get someone who knows how to weld. And I'm not gonna go over welding because it's, I don't know how to do it. Besides, it's more expensive than anything we're doing here. All these tools leading up to right now will keep you fun functioning and happy in this sport for years. Riveting tools are definitely on your must-haves for this sport. You'll probably need something like this because you need this to remove the rivet, which I will explain. These to also help remove the rivets. If you have something like this laying around at home, it could work just as well. Hmm. This is my anvil. I don't have an anvil. I can, I fixed my Briggs on here. Uh, I fixed things on like my armor, like my knees. Uh, I've replaced rivets using this as an anvil. Plus the other thing why it's good to have this because if you're actually running an event, you can actually take this and use this to pound and stakes, things like that. This can come in handy. It can definitely be used as an anvil, just like that. The important thing is when you're pounding a rivet, you have it nice and flat against here. This gets way up inside of pieces of armor, my brig, everything. You can even lay it down flat like that if you need to. Perfectly feasible to use that as an anvil. You're gonna need a, like a ball peen hammer, something like this, because this is gonna be used to flatten down the other side of your rivet. You wanna see how to do rivet? Let's go. This is my hidden protection on my Aventail, right? The reason that this has a shorter piece of leather and a longer one is because they overlap. That's, that's how you, you sew them in a line like that. As you can see, this one is ripped. So there's the rivet, right? What I'm going to do, it's basically, this is basically a nail and it's cut and we're gonna show you exactly what to do. All right, so I'm going to take this flatter, fatter side 
I'm going to lay that down. You should use personal protection, which means something like safety glasses, things like that when you're drilling. Take all the safety precautions you can. These gloves, which I'd love to use as hand protection, are actually going to be used for the leather that I re so re rivet onto this plate. So I'm going to take this off, trace on here. These gloves, I bought them because it's leather and it's flexible, durable. We're going to use that to mount here. Okay? We're going to cut a pattern out of these. I'm taking the, the bigger, flatter side. This drill bit is bigger than the center, the shaft of this rivet. A rivet is a piece of metal which flattened on both sides to be bigger so it won't come back out. You're drilling off out so much of that flathead. Can you see this now? See how it just like dips in from where this drill bit was? All right, that's probably in far enough. We're gonna go ahead and do this one too while we're at it. Try and get it nice and centered. Basically, you have both of those flat. See, this is the other side. That's the part, the part that they pounded down. These are basically nails. That is the, the flat top part of the nail that they've uh, bent down. So next, I'm going to take this. Next, I'm going to actually use this tool here. I'm going to sort of roll this off. See, we're taking off the old leather here. You want to drill down one side of these rivets so that you can take your tool and pull it through the hole. Obviously, now we're having all kinds of trouble. So I'm taking this nail here. There, see it? I popped it out. So we got two holes. Uh, that rivet was so smashed on both sides, I couldn't pull it out. The, the, the leather in between, right? Whenever they nail it, must have just got smushed the whole way. So either way, you drill one side of the rivet so you remove uh, the big part is covering it. So when you take your tool from the other side, you can grab it and pull it out. I prefer to use these here because then you can actually roll it. But anyway, the important thing is that rivet is out. Save time in a video, I already cut a piece of this glove away that I'm going to use right here. I drew the shape that I need because it's going to go here. Give yourself plenty of room around rivets. Give your plenty of room around metal. And I'm going to use the more durable side up against the steel. Think of this armor. Fabric is, is not very durable. Think of it as a bunch of tiny little knives just cutting, cutting into your fabric. Over time, it's going to wear out. Give yourself plenty of room around rivets and things we're going to go in. Doesn't fit, right? So here's where you might need to buy a couple more things. You can have a drill bit to make these holes bigger. Um, I tend to use these, these are number 11 nails. They're only like uh, three quarter of an inch long because I'm never gonna need that much and you're usually gonna be clipping like most of that nail off anyway. So these today are not gonna work. Luckily I found some 8D nails, eight penny, whatever you like to call them. And these both fit in perfect. So that's the size of the holes. Obviously you don't need that much of a nail. That's why these come in handy where they have this cutter. When you're cutting, don't ever hold it like this because what you're going to do is going to cut, it's going to go boop, and you're going to have skin that's going to get stuck in here. Always cut nails and things. When you're cutting, use the handle. Don't ever put your hand up this far. I'm telling you, you get a huge blood blister. You're not going to be happy. All right, so this is the, the length I need. This leather is pretty thin. So I'm gonna take my marker, because I know where I'm gonna cut, where I'm gonna try and cut these nails. You wanna have enough of this nail that you're gonna pound down to make the other end fat. Where I put that mark, that's where we're gonna use these to cut. I'm gonna try and put that there because this nail head is gonna go flying. There we go. This is now what I have left in my nail. This is my rivet. I'm gonna cut this one at the exact same length. A lot of times these have little, little lines you can sort of count. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna make this one match. My other rivet. Now we're going back to must have tool number one. Where's my leather punch? I'm gonna put a dot in here, a dot there. That looks pretty good. So that is where I'm gonna use my leather punch. Remember I said that this turns? Well, that's because these are different sizes. I want to be, that's a good size right there. Not too big, not too small. I've used this thing so much, sometimes they get a little worn out. There's a hole and there's a hole. Okay, I'm gonna cut the line. This is basically gonna look like this. We'll do one rivet at a time. There's a rivet. And I put the leather there. Can you see now, flat end of the nail goes through. That's the part where we cut sticking up with the leather on there. Oh, man, I don't like to just do this inside. Like, this is when metal can fragment, so it's important she has some kind of safety glasses on. And I'm going around in a circle and flattening this side out. As you can see, that is now fastened. We're going to do that with the next one. Goes in. I put this hole of the, I put, so it goes through this hole with the leather. Can you see that? And now we're gonna flatten it and it'll look just like that one. A lot of times it's, it's not the, it's not the rivet itself that goes bad, it's the leather or the fabric. So you find yourself replacing leather that's, that's what you got. There you go. And now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it on the even skinnier one because we're gonna need some holes in here for when we get to sew it. One, two, three, And four. This thing's a little worn out, but basically I put the holes in there. Um, I'll, I'll fix it later before I get it up. But as you can see now, it's gonna line up just like that. So that is what you're usually replacing rivets for. It's not because they the rivets go bad or break. It's because the fabric around it does. Um, just another tip, this is a brass rod, it's brass. You can use a grinder to cut it down, it makes no sparks, but you can actually make rivets. This is this is a lot thicker than a nail, but you can cut this and it's just a, a cylinder and you flatten on both sides. If I'm doing something longer, like this long, I like to use brass. You can get steel too, but you can actually um, use this and you can cut to length, use it just like rivet. I actually had a TikTok about it a while ago where I showed myself doing it. Any questions on this stuff? This is everything you need to survive in this sport on your own. You can do all this stuff at your house. Like I said, you don't need the power tools, except you will need something to be able to drill. If you don't own one of these, hopefully you're able to have access to one. So I hope that helps. Uh, you know, even before the, the Carolina carnage, I had to take my brig and I had to replace six rivets in it. I had a gauntlet rivet to replace. So this stuff comes in handy. Um, it's the rivets are the biggest investment of it, but all the tools leading up to this are fairly inexpensive. And as you can see, even when we get to the rivet part, all these tools we used before, you're gonna need them again. Obviously the very first thing you're gonna need is the leather punch, just to summarize. 
The very next thing you're gonna need is a sewing kit to, to do like arming points, maybe fix repairs where things, uh, where the, the thread or, or string on your helmets or shields broke. So that's that second. When you start fighting, your weapons are gonna have nicks and, and dings and things, and you can't have any sharp points. So anything like sticking up, you're gonna have to be able to not sharpen the blade, but go on top of it to file those, those parts down to make it so that the marshal will be nice and happy and pass your weapon. Then as, you're, as time goes on, farther down the road than that, you're gonna have straps break. You're gonna have to know how to rivet. You're gonna have chainmail break. If you have chainmail, you're gonna have to have the chainmail kit. So all this stuff is basically everything you do at home. Anything crazier than what we can handle with all these tools right here is gonna be because you need to ha have somebody that knows how to weld or do metal fabrication. But everything right here is, is the five must have tools for Armored Combat Boot Hurt. If you like this video, if you made it this far, wow, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, share this with anybody who could use the tips. I hope it helped you out. Uh, leave a like, comment, it just helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Everybody, this is Bashaw Knight. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll catch you in the next one.